Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. Aunt Sophie was different from most people. She lived in a beautiful house with huge wooded gardens. From the road, you couldn't see the house and no one else lived nearby. I didn't know very much about her. My parents always told me to be nice to her because she had a hard life, but they never really told me why. I knew her husband died in a car accident, but I only knew this because I overheard part of a conversation. I also knew she had a lot of money. I would stay at Aunt Sophie's for two weeks every year, and I loved every minute of it. We lived in the suburbs of a city, and it was great to have so much freedom at Aunt Sophie's. She was always very nice to me, and we became very close. Aunt Sophie always talked about my cousin Sue, but she never seemed to be home when I came to see her. I had not seen Sue in a long time. Aunt Sophie was always telling me how Sue was doing at college and what exciting things she was doing when I came to visit. Aunt Sophie was a great seamstress. Whenever I went to visit, she was always working on a beautiful dress. Often in the evening, I would sit and watch her as she worked on a dress for some great event. My aunt told me that Sue went to a lot of formal balls and had to have a new dress for each one. The gowns were always a bit over the top, with full skirts and built-in petticoats. As I watched her sew, I wished I could wear one of the beautiful dresses she was making. Since I could remember, I've loved dressing up in girly clothes. These gowns were my dream, but I never got the chance to wear them. Sue always kept her door locked so I couldn't get into her room when I came to visit. I never found out if she knew that I loved nothing more than putting on a pair, but if she did, I never found out. When my aunt took a nap in the afternoon, I went out into her yard to her summer house, put on a skirt and a blouse, and played in the yard that way. I didn't think she could see me from her house because her property was so big, and I loved every minute of it. Whenever I went to visit Sue, it seemed like we had to go shopping at least once because she needed something. She drove me to the nearby big town on these occasions, and we rushed around the shops to find what Sue needed. I got to see a side of women's fashion that I would never have seen on my own. She bought the most beautiful jeans, blouses, and dresses. When I went to college, my trips changed. I spent less time with Aunt Sophie, but I went there a little more often. I still changed in her summer house when I was cross-dressing. I hid some of them in the summer house so I wouldn't have to bring them every time. In all the years I've been visiting my aunts, I never got caught, and I don't think she knew about it. I was very careful all the time. When I was young, my father died, and when I went to college, my mother told me she was getting married again and moving up north. I lived in dorms at college, so I stayed there. Since my mom and I didn't get along very well, I either spent the holidays in the dorms or with my aunts. When I went to see my aunt, she seemed to want to go shopping more often, and she started asking me what to buy for Sue. It was hard for me not to talk about my own tastes, but it seemed that Sue's and my tastes were very similar. When I went to see my aunt during my last year of college, I was shocked to see how weak she was. She tried to ignore my concerns, but when I didn't give up, she said she was sick, but the doctors were good, so I shouldn't worry. Just before my final exams, a lawyer called me and asked me to set up a time to meet with him. When I went there, I was sad to find out that my aunt had died. I went to the lawyer's office with the hope that I would finally see Sue again. When I went into the lawyer's office, I found myself alone. He started talking after we sat down. The lawyer told me that my aunt had left everything to me because I was her only heir. I was shocked. What about Sue, my aunt's daughter? Doesn't she get something? The lawyer gave me a strange look and told me, your aunt's only child, Susan, died in the same car accident that killed her husband. Wait, didn't you know? I was so shocked that I couldn't understand anything. Even though there were still things to be done, the lawyer gave me the key to my aunt's house and told me that I would get a payment from her money until everything was settled. As I was getting up to leave, he gave me a letter written by my aunt that said, to be opened in private after my death. I then put the letter in my pocket and went home. I popped open a bottle of wine and opened the letter carefully. There were a few pieces of paper and a key inside. The letter was read. Dear Jason, you should already know that Sue and my husband died together. I never got over losing her, so I dealt with it by making clothes and talking about her. I'm sorry for telling you a lie. Over the years, you have been such a comfort to me. 
I've always known that you were different from the other boys I knew, and I'm sure that at least some of your caring personality came from the time you spent with me and dressed as a girl. I was shocked to find out that she knew I cross-dressed. <sighs> you probably thought you were being very private, but when I got out of bed one afternoon to open the window, I saw you leaving the summer house in a pretty skirt and blouse. I quickly figured out that you went there every afternoon while I was taking a break, and I found your clothes that you had hidden. I didn't care if it made your life easier. When I first started making and buying clothes, I did so as if Sue were still with me. I felt like she was still alive when I pretended to buy her clothes. When I found out your secret, I bought some things and said they were for Sue, but I really had you in mind. Each time, I vowed to find the right time to tell you I knew, but the right time never came. So I never had the pleasure of showing you your feminine side. Sue's old room is where the key goes. I hope you enjoy the content as much as I think you will. Have a great life. Aunt Sophie is great. I couldn't believe it when I drove to my new house the next day. When I walked into the empty house, it felt strange, and I wondered if I could really live there. I went upstairs to Sue's room and opened the door with a racing heart. I've never seen a room with so much satin, lace, and frills in all my life. My aunt must have known me really well because she put the most beautiful outfit on a bed with a note to me. The dress was a gold ball gown with short puffy sleeves, a fitted bodice with delicate embroidery and sequins, and a very full ankle-length skirt with ruffles on each tier. Instead of the matching waist slip, there was the fullest, most layered chiffon petticoat I'd ever seen. I also saw a pair of gold shoes and a pair of silk-seamed stocks that were my size. I looked at the outfit for a long time before I finally picked up the note and read it. Darling Jason, as I write this, I know I won't be with you for long. So I picked out an outfit I think you'll like. In the box, there is a wig that goes well with the outfit. I know your hair is longer than usual, but it looks great with this outfit. I hope you have a great life and find someone to share it with who will appreciate how special you are. Like Aunt Sophie. I opened the box and saw the most beautiful shoulder-length blonde wig with waves. Slowly, with tears in my eyes, I took put on the dress. Next, I sat down at the dressing table and opened the drawers to find a wide range of makeup. I put on powder, blush, eyeliner, and lipstick. I almost cried again when I sprayed perfume on myself and realized it smelled like Aunt Sophie's perfume. I'd never worn a wig before and it took me a while to put it on. But when I was done and looked in the mirror, I was amazed to see that it looked just like me. When I put on the huge petticoat and pulled it up to my waist and tied the drawstring, my hands were shaking. This was the most amazing thing I had ever felt. I took the dress's zipper off and pulled it over my head, letting the skirts flow around me. I had trouble zipping it up, and then I put the skirt on top of my petticoat. I had never felt happier. I looked at myself in the mirror and twisted and turned. This was pure happiness. It was a beautiful day, and I knew I had to go out into the garden. I went downstairs to do so. The skirt was so wide that I had to ease it through the doorway and be very careful going down the stairs. When I finally got to the back door, I unlocked and opened it before walking out onto the patio. As I walked across the patio and into the garden, I thought I was the most beautiful woman in the world. As I walked along, enjoying how nice the clothes felt, I was in my own world. I thought that today really was the first day of my new life. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.